From freeing the story from its racist shackles to making Wendy more than just a motherly figure to the Lost Kids, here's how Peter Pan and Wendy fixes its problematic history. Peter Pan's a tale for kids that's more than a century old. And if you've been paying attention, it's always had a disturbing edge to it. In 1904, the first Peter Pan plays were performed, and by 1911, J.M. Barrie's novel was published. His masterpiece painted a world that you could easily get lost in, but it wasn't all just pixie dust and magic. The author used racist tropes and stereotypes, and believe me when I say that it wasn't subtle. Remember the character Tiger Lily, the native princess of Neverland? She was written and characterized in a negative light compared to other kids, and Barry even used slurs such as redskins and savages to describe her tribe. The original works also had a language for the natives, which sounded like gibberish more or less, and made a mockery of their Native American tongue. So the most glaring problem of the story was simple, racism. But that wasn't the only problem. Problem, the original source material also had a sexist undertone, with male characters casually saying stuff like, girls talk way too much, and Tinkerbell was always self-conscious about her body and checking herself out in the mirror. You'd think that when it comes to the many Peter Pan film adaptations over the years, that writers would have been more mindful of these issues, right? But nope, and they had plenty of chances to get it right. Peter Pan's been put on the screen dozens of times, and sure, nothing beats the original 1953 Disney adaptation, but that was wasn't without its flaws either. In the 53 version, Tiger Lily barely said a word and was shown as a damsel in distress, just waiting around to be rescued by Peter. And that wasn't the only issue with the 53 version. They came up with a song titled, What Makes the Red Man Red? Oof! According to Anne Hebert Alton, an English professor at Central Michigan University and the editor of the scholarly edition of Peter Pan, Barry's work is problematic for modern audiences and deeply rooted in the way things were at the time. Because of the controversial nature of the 1953 film, Disney Plus put a content advisory notice on it and was scrapped from children's profiles entirely. There's been other problematic film adaptations of Peter Pan as well. Remember 2015's Pan? It was a live-action adaptation of the classic that had Rooney Mara as Tiger Lily. But fans were quick to point out that the filmmakers were whitewashing Tiger Lily. David Lowry's movie gets right to the heart of the matter, and Peter Pan and Wendy does a great job of fixing this problematic history. For starters, it finally does something about the stereotypes, and Tiger Lily emerges as a full-on leader, acting as a mentor to Wendy as she goes through her own struggles of growing up. Lowry wanted to ensure that the role, which had been wronged time and time again, got the cultural respect it deserved. He worked with Native consultants Don Jackson and Dr. Kevin Lewis to help nail the character, and this time around, Tiger Lily's played by Cree actor Alyssa Wapanatak. Her goal was to make the character as authentic as possible, and she even consulted her grandmother and brought her cultural background into the mix, which elevated Tiger Lily from the one-dimensional character fans saw in the past. Alyssa also said that her own spirituality helped her play the part, because her culture was a big part of the character, and as long as she was honest, she was sure things would fall into place. And fall in place they did. Peter Pan and Wendy brought Tiger Lily to life like never before, and it gives the princess the story she deserves. She has a much more prominent role with a heroic streak, and get this, at one point Point, she's the one who saves Peter's life when he falls several stories. And as an added touch, Alyssa speaks her native language throughout the film, and the bravery of her character is highlighted when she fights the pirates, and ultimately helps defeat the dreaded Captain Hook. According to Lowry, Tiger Lily's arc was the key to correcting some of the problems of the past, and he wanted Alyssa to have control over it. Actor Yara Shahidi, who plays Tinkerbell, said that Lowry updated the fairy tale beautifully and went right in to correct the stereotypes that had been in the story for far too long. And speaking of Tinkerbell, she's got a voice in the latest movie. In the original, Tinkerbell came off as a little creepy, had a weird obsession with Peter, and was jealous of Wendy. Plus, it didn't help that she could only communicate with Peter through gestures. Peter was totally fine with the arrangement, though, because according to him, women talk too much anyways. Tinkerbell being unable to speak reinforced the idea that female voices don't matter. So 2023's Peter Pan and Wendy takes a totally different route, and it's really refreshing to say the least. At the start of the movie, we learn that Peter can hear Tinkerbell, and the only reason Wendy can't is that she doesn't understand fairies. This setup highlights that fairies are exotic, and you have to be patient before being able to hear them. Later in the movie, Wendy's nice to Tinkerbell, and realizes that even though Tink can talk to Peter, she's still misunderstood because he doesn't really listen to her. Towards the end, Wendy can hear the fairy too, and she's glad because it makes Tinkerbell feel heard. So instead of 
of having a romantic rivalry between the two ladies, we get some compassion and understanding. Tink even teaches Wendy how to fly. Lowry admits that the older version of the fairy was iconic, but he felt it was time to change things up and have them change each other for the better. That's not the only bonus when it comes to the 2023 adaptation though, it's also much more diverse. Originally, Peter Pan basically had all white characters, apart from Tiger Lily and her tribe, so this film's miles ahead of its 1953 counterpart. Peter's played by British actor Alexander Milan, and even though he doesn't look like the Peter Pan we all know, he embodies the character's energy perfectly. And since Disney has a notorious history when it comes to casting black characters, this is corrected with Shahidi as Tinker Bell, the actress from Choctaw, African American, and Iranian heritage. Peter Pan and Wendy also adds a touch of gender diversity by replacing the Lost Boys with the Lost Kids. The twin sisters Kelsey and Skylar Yates and Kazakhstani actress Diana Soy played Lost Girls in the Gang. The movie also made history when they cast Noah Matthews Matovsky as Slightly, the leader of the pack. Did you know that Noah's the first kid with Down syndrome to land a major role in a Disney movie? Lowry said he's got so many nieces and nephews who'd all be thrilled to go on an adventure, and he thinks that kids all around the world should be able to see themselves as part of the story too, and the cast totally reflects that. The brilliance of the casting also shows in Captain Hook's character too. Jude Law really elevates the bitter pirate. As the story progresses, it's revealed that the captain is a complex individual, which adds an extra layer of sympathy to his frightening image, and Jude nails it. If you look at the character's wardrobe, this time around Hook has a different look than what we're used to, and that was intentional. Law said he wasn't all that into the earrings and necklaces, and wanted to portray a tactical-looking pirate. His rendition of Hook definitely shows signs of aging, and he even dyes his hair to hide it, but there's no doubt that things are falling apart for him. Plus, Hook's untidiness is another sign of him getting older. Jude's performance really makes him stand out from past renditions of the character, and speaking of standing out, Wendy gets a total makeover in Peter Pan and Wendy too. Instead of making Wendy a classic damsel in distress stereotype waiting to be rescued, this movie makes her the emotional center of the story. She compliments Peter with her empathy and compassion, which are things he sometimes lacks. Wendy helps the other children understand why growing up is important, something that Peter's always feared. So here she corrects another wrong message that might be taken away from the film. And did I mention that Lowry's adaptation has something really unique that's never been seen before? When Wendy talks about her mother, she isn't sure if she herself wants to be one someday, which is important because it's a theme that would have never been explored in past adaptations. This highlights the fact that nowadays, Women are free to choose a path in life other than motherhood. Through Wendy, Lowry shows audiences that growing up isn't the worst thing in the world after all. So, from making Wendy more than just a motherly figure to the lost kids, to freeing the story from its racist shackles, that's how Peter Pan and Wendy fixes its problematic history.